higher power. Identify the tissue surrounding the pointer. Reticular. Okay, good. You remember. Okay, reticular from way back when. Okay. <clears throat> and reticular tissue is very common in and holds these delicate lymphoid organs together. And so here we're holding this, this lymphoid organ um, all, all together and we've got all kinds of cells in scattered in it with, that, with the reticular fibers. See, that, that's the reticular fibers. And then the, or, the, the cells, where, where the cells have stayed with it, um, it gets this appearance. And there's basically two cells there. There's um, fibrocytes that have made the reticular fibers and there's lymphocytes. Okay? And we, we back off and look at the lymphocytes and we can see that there's a pattern. Where we are here, you see you have these cords and sinuses. So it's a what? That's the medulla? Yes, that's the medulla of the lymph node. And we get out into the periphery here, we find these spherical structures, okay, and the periphery is, is what? Cortex. cortex. Whoops, the glue's been pinging over there. So it's the cortex. Let's see if we can find a spot where it is, okay. But these circular structures are out in the cortex. They are the lymphoid nodules. And there's our capsule, and there's a trabeculum. But this is that slide that was stained with silver to primarily just show the reticular fibers. So you can see the reticular fibers of the uh, lymph node. Okay? And uh, so out here would be T cells. In, in these uh, germinal centers would be the B cells. And we get down into the center and the medullary cords here, you're going to have the macrophages for cleaning up that uh, uh, lymphatic fluid. Good view of cortex here, even though it's not stain it's stained to show fibers, not to show... Um, okay, the cord, go back. Uh, the cord are these cords of lymphoid tissue. That are, that are going through and they're surrounded by the sinuses because this is where the lymph fluid is going to flow. So the, cords are the, big, thick the, the cords are the thick, obvious uh, masses of, of lymphocytes, macrophages. And what I was wondering here is because this slide was not prepared to show it, it may have a hyalus, but it doesn't. There's no hyalus and, and no uh, uh, afferent or efferent vessels here. It has to be situated just right uh, for the uh, cut to catch it. Okay, so those, ooh, that sounds good on tape. Those are the only, um, and we have Mary right in the middle of the film. Get out of the way, Mary. People are paying money for this. Okay. Um, what I want to do is go over some charts here and show you uh, the highlights on some charts. Uh, we have the uh, circulatory system chart here, nervous system you can ignore now. You, you, you know that. You're experts in nervous system already, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we can look at the circulatory chart. And this one has a lot of vessels on it. Too many. Okay. Now, Kim will try and follow where I'm pointing with this thing, and we'll see. Go to the center here, and what are we going to try and see on this? Major vessels. What do we have here? Aorta. It bifurcates into the two what? Common iliacs, which each bifurcate into the what? Internal iliac and external iliac. Down about here, the external iliac turns into the femoral artery that's going to go down. It goes behind the knee as the popliteal artery. And we get branches down here into anterior tibial and posterior tibial. Okay? And that's as far down 
as we'll, as we'll take it in terms of names of arteries there. But we can see those major arteries pretty, pretty clearly. Um, we come back up to the heart and go above the heart. The main plumbing right there is kind of obscure, isn't it? We have coming out of the heart, the arch that comes over uh, and, and comes around, which is what? The aortic arch. The aortic arch. Okay. Off the aortic arch, here, obscured, is a single vessel. Brachiocephalic. The brachiocephalic. And brachiocephalic means, well, brachium means what? Arm. Cephalic means what? Head. Okay. So the brachiocephalic bifurcates into the common carotid, which comes up here and gives rise to the external carotid, and then inside the internal carotid. At the bifurcation, we come out into an artery that goes out and runs down the upper limb, and it changes names as it goes. We go along it, uh, it comes out of the brachiocephalic as the subclavian. Golly, look, it's under the clavicle. <laughs> nice name, huh? Right, and, and, and then it, it goes through the armpit. It's axillary. And then it goes down the uh, arm proper, and the word for arm is brachium. brachium. So this is the brachial artery. And again, it bifurcates, and it's on the other side. We can see it better, so over here. What, Kim? You can say something. Okay. Um, this is like really hard to go up and down, and it's like really... Jerks? Jerks. Okay. So I don't know... If Sorry, grab it by the handle way at the back. I know, it's just yeah. kind of... I know. So, yeah. sorry. <laughs> A little technical detail in the middle of the film. Here. But you get over to the right, and you can see that the brachial comes down, and it bifurcates right in the elbow region into, okay, goes down the thumb side, which radial. is the radial, and goes down the uh, pinky side, which is the ulnar. ulnar. Good. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> The veins on this particular chart, most of the veins that are big enough to identify are, are paralleling the same artery, aren't they? Okay. I mean, uh, if we start from the foot, can we go down to the foot? Will that work? If we start from down here at the foot, we start off the big toe, and we come up this vein here, it's the great saphenous vein. And the great saphenous comes up, and it's paralleling. It's a superficial vein. It's paralleling this deep vein here, which is the um, femoral vein. They unite up here at the place where it becomes the external iliac vein, the common iliac vein, and then goes up the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. From above, the um, draining out of the sinuses, it comes down as the external jugular vein, which joins with the um, subclavian vein to become the brachiocephalic, to become the superior vena cava. Okay? So those are all coming down and flowing into that right atrium also. <clears throat> the superficial vein on the arm here is the cephalic. I don't know why it's called the cephalic, but it's the, it's the cephalic vein. And, and that one, by vet, veterinarians like it because that's the one they use in the forelimb of animals for giving uh, IVs and stuff, because it's an easy one to get onto. Uh, but coming along with the main artery, okay, we have subclavian, axillary, brachial, oops, and, and the other arm, we have the radial and the ulnar. Okay? This region in here, in, in the front side of the elbow, is called the antecubital. And one of the main veins, this one coming across here, is the antecubital vein. And that's a really important one if you're going into any healthcare stuff, because that's where you stick a lot of needles. Okay? Is you do like to do blood drawing and stuff there in that antecubital vein. Is that the one that's called median cubital? I think, I, I think it is, okay. median cubital. That's what they call it. That's what they call it in our book. 